Oh hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I was scrolling the interwebs and found out that it's been 13 years that we've had the delight of Taylor Swift. So I thought, you know what, let's put together a timeline. Let's go through her bops, her boyfriends, her awards, even some lyrics that like shook me to my core because T-Swift was the center of my childhood, my teenagehood, my 20hood. So let's just get started. Before we get started though, Ha! Huh, cancel back. Be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos every single week and it helps me a whole bunch. Now, let's get to the action. So first things first, this is how I found out today was the anniversary because Tim McGraw was released, that was her debut single, June 19th, 2006, you guys. And oh my gosh, we were all little tiny babies. <laughs> also on that self-title album, Taylor Swift, in case you didn't know Taylor Swift's name was Taylor Swift, was our song. And oh my gosh, like little, I would have been like, I think 10 or 11 year old me thought that that was so deep. Like our song, we don't have a song. We just have the sounds of our love that we make when we open screen doors and like talk on the phone really quietly. So our parents don't hear like, come on. Then we moved to 2007. This is when she started to get those awards. She won the Nashville Songwriters Association Artist of the Year. And she was the youngest ever to win that award. 2008, now this is where I'm gonna say we're getting into the glory days of T-Swift because you got a little song called, oh, I don't know if you've heard it, Love Story. Oh my gosh, the cinematography in that music video and the dancing and the costumes. And they just wanna be in love. They just wanna be together. Then you're hitting me with You Belong With Me where you got her looking at, you know, the cute boy in the window and no joke I have a video I'm not sure if it's on here but on Facebook where I recreated that video with like a family friend and my brother and we didn't have any like sports or anything so I just put him in like a motocross helmet and had him spike a football yeah needless to say this song was a bop and also just gave us all hope that like the person we liked would <laughs> dump the other person they were dating and find out that we were the one they were meant to be with so ugh. Then you had that end scene where they show the I love you cards and oh my gosh, try not to weep. Not to mention, I mean, in her early days, she had teardrops on my guitar, which the number of times I sang that song when I was emotional and couldn't, you know, deal with the fact that the boy didn't like me. Even one time there was a guy I liked that's name was Drew. How perfect is that? 2009, it becomes the best selling album in the US. With the highs come the lows though, because this was also the year of the infamous MTV Movie Award, Kanye West interruption. I just thought, let's all watch it together. Let's refresh our memories and then we gotta talk about this. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. I just, you have to remember that at this point, she's like 20 years old, you know? She is such a young little bean and to be interrupted in such a huge stage in front of freaking Beyonce and all these celebrities, so uncomfortable. Almost you don't believe that it actually happened. I'm surprised that Kanye wasn't canceled after that too. He's done so much and he's still like thriving. And honestly, some of that might be because of Kim K. But that year she also won four Grammy Awards, making her the youngest album of the year winner ever. Another song on that was 15. And I was 15 when that song came out. Guys, one of the lyrics is when you're 15 and someone tells you they love you, you're gonna believe them. Just think about that. Think about how deep and emotional that is. Like ugh, people today, you know, you, they say you love you. Do you mean it? Like, oh my gosh, how are we going that deep at such a young age? Someone else like fangirl with me so that I'm not just going crazy. Let me know, like this was a big moment, right? This was also when she started dating Taylor Lautner and that was like a huge thing because of Twilight and all that. And she was in Valentine's Day with him where they like, kissed in it and it was a whole weird thing but like let's move on then she releases speak now which became the fastest selling digital album ever released by a female artist for this album she was the sole writer and one of the songs in it was mean which just like what a bop because you know she's just saying i'm thriving why do you got to bring me down it was just deep i don't know i thought it was one of those things where you're like yeah like they're gonna have their comeuppance is that like a hip thing to say? I don't know. This was also around the time where she started dating Jake Gyllenhaal and that was just like such a random relationship and allegedly 
the song We Are Never Getting Back Together is about him. And honestly, I believe that because he does seem kind of pretentious. So it would make sense that he would think that he would have an album that was much cooler than hers. 2011 American Music Awards, she won Favorite Artist of the Year and Best Country Album. 2012 opens with her releasing the album Red with that bold red lip. Loved that. Copied that many a time in high school. And it was also the time where she dated Connor Kennedy, another one of those like random couplings. Highest opening sales in the US in a decade with 1.2 million copies sold. At least I Knew You Were Trouble. And look, it's a, it's a great song, you know, allegedly about Harry Styles and how he's a party boy or something. But the real blessing was the vine that came out of it. You all know which one, but just in case you don't, I will bless you with it. Now I'm lying on the cold hard ground. 2013, she did Highway Don't Care with Tim McGraw. She was a guest vocalist on it. And more importantly, she had a cameo in New Girl, which like my favorite comedy, so this is a big moment for her. Oh, Shibby, I've loved you since the first grade. 2014 she released 1989 super solid album and she was the first female to win album of the year twice and the fifth act of all time and it won three grammys altogether one of the best songs and this is actually my favorite taylor swift song is blank space came out just because you know i'm in the midst of dating at this point and the song is boys only want love if it's torture and i could not even stress to you how much i related to that lyric i was like yeah i just want something simple i just want something easy and all these boys just want to like play with my heart and my emotions and i can't handle it and that is what the song is about and just talking about how she's dated a lot of guys and they're all like oh she's crazy when really she's just looking for love and all these guys are playing with her guys these guys are playing with a hot such a good song though, an amazing music video. This was also the year when she removed her stuff from Spotify and there was that whole licensing thing. 2015, she performed Shake It Off on SNL with Paul McCartney. She also started dating Calvin Harris, which was definitely one of her biggest relationships. And they actually were the highest paid celebrity couple by Forbes, like Forbes reported it. So that's how you know it's legit. 2016 was a big year. She wrote This Is What You Came For for Rihanna with Calvin Harris. And also, big year for me, because 2016 she started dating Tom Hiddleston. Back in the day, your girl loved Tom Hiddleston. Like, I still, like, stan him, but just less so. But back in the day when I was young and I even didn't know that these people actually had personalities and I was just kind of, like, getting the tip of the iceberg, I thought that he was everything. So when they started dating, your my little teenage heart was very emotional, could not handle it. Um, but luckily for me, they broke up later on. Um, and it was like all this drama because apparently they were flirting before her and Calvin even broke up. It was a whole thing, the Met Gala and that tank top that he wore, it was just a lot. There was a big rumor that it was just a publicity stunt because he had Night Manager coming out and she had her album and it was a whole thing. But she ended up starting to date Joe Alwyn that same year too and that's the dude she's with still so everything worked out. 2017, her sixth album, Reputation, drops. Look What You Made Me Do topped the US and UK charts and in the US she became the top act of all time to have four albums sell one million copies within the first week of release in the US. 2018 she starts off that reputation tour, it's breaking multiple venue records, grossed 266.1 million dollars. And on December 31st, the Reputation Stadium tour debuts on Netflix and it's like a concert video series of the tour. So that's legit. So now we're in 2019, the era of Lover. We got those bops. Um, the me and you need to calm down, which I've done a video on actually. So if you want to know all the Easter eggs in You Need to Calm Down, the celebrity cameos, all the gossip and stuff, I dissected all the cinematography and stuff so you can check that out. But... These have been super big debuts. Obviously, we've got a lot of new cinematography, lots of pops, lots of bubbles, all of that jazz going on now. And that's it. That's a brief history. You know, I didn't touch all the people she... I didn't touch all the people she did. I didn't touch on all the people that she dated. I didn't message... Can I speak? I didn't talk about everything that she won every award obviously that would take forever but hopefully this gave you a cool little you know flashback to some of the, your memories with these songs i would love to hear please put in the comments like your memories with these songs your favorite lyrics what song even is your favorite i would love to know because these are all super emotional for me i'm sure they are for you if you've liked it please subscribe because i put out new videos every single week and it helps me a whole bunch subscribe